Hi everybody and welcome back to Enjoy English with Mrs. A. I'm Mrs. A and today we're going to have a look at some family idioms. As you well know, idioms are expressions. And in English we have so many. So today we're going to have a look at some of the most typical idioms involving family and we're also going to explain them. It's very important to use idioms when speaking, not over the top, but it shows that you manage a good deal of vocabulary whenever you integrate idioms in your usual speech. So these expressions are very important to use, especially when you have your oral exams. For Cambridge, for TOEFL, for IELTS, for any other exam out there, especially from level B2 up, try and integrate as many idioms as possible, not over the top, but select one or two or three, depending on your topic. And in case your topic is family, let's start with the first one. And we can say punctuality runs in the family, runs in the family. So when you see this expression to run in the family, it means that something is popular among all the members of your family. Punctuality runs in the family means that all your family members are punctual. They are right on time to meetings, going to work or meeting friends. So it's a characteristic, a feature of all the members of your family. You can also say blue eyes run in my family. That means it's very popular for a lot of your family members to have blue eyes. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now this is a saying that means you are quite similar to your parents. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree means that we have certain qualities or flaws that are very similar to the ones of our family. Maybe if your mom and dad like practicing a lot of outdoor sports and so do you, then the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. You have similar tastes. This expression can be used to describe positive or negative things. So we can say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree when we refer to positive or negative traits. Another popular expression is like father, like son, or like mother, like daughter, or like father, like daughter. And this means you are very similar to the parent in question. So if your dad is an engineer and you're an engineer as well, your father can be very proud and say like father, like son. Moving on with the next expression, Jane takes after her mother. When somebody takes after somebody else, it means they are very similar. She takes after her mother can refer to the physical appearance, but also to qualities or flaws that belong to the mother or father or anyone in the family. So she takes after her mother can mean that she is as beautiful as her mother or she follows in her mother's footsteps. So this means this doesn't have anything to do with the physical appearance. She follows in her mother's footsteps means like mother, like daughter. Maybe they have the same preference for outdoor sports or for music or that they share qualities or flaws. By the way, if you don't know what this is, quality is something good about yourself, a skill, and flaw is something not so great about yourself, something that you can improve. If you look like your mother or like your dad a lot, lot, we say you are the spitting image of your mother. This is an expression that means that you look exactly like your mother. So when somebody is the spitting image of somebody else, it means they look alike. They are very similar. You are the apple of my eye. Oh my God, what's up with the English expressions and apples? <laughs> the apple doesn't fall, fall far from the tree. You are the apple of my eye. I mean, what is this? Everybody must like apples a lot. Well, you are the apple of my eye is another way to say you are very dear to me. 
you are what I love most. So you are the apple of my eye or you are my pride and joy. It means that you are everything to me. And when things don't go very well among your family members, well, you can say, I had a falling out with my dad. People can get along, which means you are very good friends or you have a great relationship or people don't get along, which means they are not exactly friends at this moment in time. They had some arguments or something that made their relationship difficult. So I had a falling out with my dad. It means that we, at this moment in time, we don't get along very well. We are, we don't have the best relationship because maybe we had an argument or maybe something happened that disrupted that relationship. So once again, remember, I get along with my family. This means you're all friends. Everything is going swimmingly. I don't get along with my family when things are not great. My mother brings home the bacon or my mother is the breadwinner of our family. This means your mother is the one who financially supports the family. The breadwinner or the one who brings home the bacon is the person that takes the role of a supporter of the, of the financial pillar of your house. I think nowadays it's more common for both parents to bring home the bacon <laughs> and for the kids just to eat and enjoy the bacon. So the bacon is another synonym in this case for money. If somebody is the breadwinner, if somebody wins the bread, somebody works hard to bring you the money home. When I was younger, I was the black sheep in my family. Now the black sheep is not exactly great, but it happened to most of us at some point in our lives when maybe we weren't behaving so great and maybe our parents were a little bit disappointed in us. So I am the black sheep means that I am not on my best behavior. <laughs> I am doing things that my parents are not proud of. So the person who is a black sheep in the family is usually given as a negative example. This is how you are not supposed to be. Don't be the black sheep of your family. Of course, when two people have an argument, they can have, like Taylor Swift said, bad blood. There's some bad blood between my sister and my little brother. This is another way to say they don't get along right now. So when two people or more people have bad blood going on, it means their relationship is not great. There's some tension over there that has not been resolved and things are not looking very well at the moment. Let's see another idiom. She was born with a silver spoon in her mouth, so she didn't have to work a day in her life. I think this whole sentence is pretty self-explanatory. If you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth, it means that you were born with certain privileges and you had a privileged life. You, you didn't know the hardships of life. You didn't have a hard life. You had an easy life. So when somebody is born with a silver spoon in their mouth, they are born with certain privileges. Most of the time, financial, and they can live well and be well without making tremendous efforts. Susan is a helicopter mom, always hovering around her children. So if Susan is a helicopter mom, problem. This is a very funny idiom. It's really funny because you're going to imagine Susan, the mom, like a helicopter hovering over her children, always looking what they're doing, controlling, right? So when somebody is very controlling and wants to know what the kids are doing at every hour of the day, they are helicopter parents. A helicopter mom hovers. Now, 
this is what exactly what the helicopter does. So a helicopter flies over something. So if Susan is a helicopter mom, she's going to hover over her children. She's going to be always looking what they're doing, if they're safe, if they need anything, right? And this is a characteristic of overprotective parents. And let's go with another one. I was named after my mother. And this means if my mother was called Jane and I am called Jane, my mother gave me her name. So if mother and daughter are called Jane, the mother probably named the daughter after herself. So I was named after my mother, but if your name is Michael, for example, this doesn't have to do with a family. I was named after, I was named after Michael Jackson. So this means my, maybe my parents were great fans of Michael Jackson and they named me Michael. You can be named after anyone or anything. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like the content. Please support me, do what I do best. And thank you so much for stopping by. This video was sponsored by enjoyenglish.es, the academy that brings the teacher to you if you live in Spain, in Zaragoza, Pamplona, or Valencia. For online classes in the rest of the world, please contact them. And don't forget to come back next week for a new video. Bye!